Hello everyone, thanks for coming on Cybernew today. Today, we're going to do a string cable change from start to finish. And I'm going to show you how you can do this, not freak yourself out, and uh, enjoy it along the way. So first things first, the press itself. So I use an Ultimate EZ for here in our shop, Average Jack Archery, Pro Shop and Range here in Fullsburg, PA. And so I need to do everything from compounds, crossbows, short bows, long bows, etc. This is an Athens Vista 31. It's my wife's bow. It's in this beautiful uh, majesty purple color and it's only a 50 pound peak. So it's not a super, t <laughs> you know, super big bow, um, but you still need a press for it, right? And as, as you can see, I don't need to add a whole lot of attention to it. Just a little bit of slack here in the string is all I need. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, you can use a spike press, you can use an easy green, uh, you can use the ultimate easy or the easy deluxe, whatever, lots of different presses out there. Uh, but you definitely are going to want some sort. I have done string cable changes with a cable style press, um, like the Bowmaster with the L adapter brackets. It does take some time. You got to be careful. You got to take your time with it. You might have to remove your uh, string stop here so that way the cables don't come in contact with it or the steel cable rather doesn't come in contact with it. But I've done it. It's not ideal, but I've done it. Um, so if you're just a DIY at home guy, that might be an option for you or spending the money a couple hundred bucks. Uh, and buying yourself a press, maybe split it with a friend, some families, uh, it uh, might be a good idea. Putting a bow in a press is not as scary as people make it out to be. People are like, oh, I've snapped limbs in the press and all sort of stuff. You really got to do some pretty nasty stuff to a bow to get it to break inside a press. Just go slow and think about it, right? So one thing I establish is when I first start adding tension on the bow with the fingers, um, as I go and I, then I look at it and say, okay, does this axle, as it sit, look parallel to the arm of the, of the part of the thing? And if it doesn't, I take tension off and I adjust the tension or the screws rather on the fingers to drive them in and out to get it to be parallel. This bow looks pretty parallel to me uh, and then I can go ahead and add tension and if I notice that it starts the when I start adding more tension right when I add all the tension I need does it look unparalleled? Nope, looks pretty square to me. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be a couple degrees off, uh, which this one is, and I'm doing just fine here. So I'm not too worried about it. So now I know I'm safe to work on this bow. I've added a little bit of tension here so the press can hold it, um, but I can uh, still have tension here on the string. What I first thing I'm gonna do is make sure I have all the string cables that I need. Uh, my wife got a set from uh, Vapor Trail. Uh, so she got a beautiful uh, purple and silver look with purple serving. Excited to uh, get those installed. And those do match our specs. We have the right string and cable lengths. If you don't know the string and cable lengths and you're going to buy the string cables yourself uh, from a major manufacturer, we use gas a lot. We've used Vapor Trail, America's Best Bow Strings we're a dealer for. Um, it's quite often they would know those string and cable lengths. But if you don't, usually a quick internet research will help you out, particularly if the bow is new enough. I'm thinking 2008 and up in particular, uh, might be able to go older for some of the bigger major manufacturers. You'll be able to find string cable lengths, no problem. Give that to the builder if they don't know them already, uh, and then you can get your set made up however you like. There are now two paths you can take with the string cable change. One, the bow is already belonging to somebody, and they are going to just set the bow up exactly the same way because they are just getting a string cable change done for them. There's one path we can take for that. The other one is a guy bought a used bow, it needs string cables, and we're going to set it up differently for him. So the kisser that's probably installed, the peep that's already installed, probably are not going to match them. Heck, the draw length might not even be the same. So when it comes to, this is my wife's bow, it is already established the way she likes it. I know her D-loop location, I see the soft knot that's inside of here that I've tied in the past, so I know that I want to do that exact same thing again. I'm going to take a tape measure. I'm going to stick it under the uh, inside the D loop underneath that top knot and I'm going to measure. Now you can pick a happy measurement or you can pick an exact measurement. It's up to you. So I see here from the underside of the top knot here on the D loop to the exact center of the peep which is where the hole is slanted back. Again you can mark this however you want to mark this right measure however you want to mark it. But I have uh, from that underside of the knot to the center of the peep is four and a half inches on the button. So now that I have that, I'm going to take that and write it down so I don't lose it. That's four and a half to center. Okay. 
four and a half to center. Same thing if my wife shot with a kisser button, I do the exact same thing. Most kisser buttons end up a little over an inch, somewhere between an inch and inch and three eighths. Um, and I would go ahead and I would make that measurement there. Mark that down on the string bag, right? So now it's on the string bag or it's on the paper that's inside of it, wherever you're gonna write it down, don't lose it, don't forget it, okay? Because once you cut everything out and you throw the string away, it's a giant pain in the butt to come back and establish it later. So now I can start removing everything. This is the only time where I use a razor blade is cutting around just the, uh, the uh, portion of the strand that goes around the peep. And sometimes I don't even go this far. Just break out a pair of little side cutters. These little, oh, those are needle nose. Little wire side cutters, here we are. These things are great because I can just keep grabbing little fibers out I never have to come anywhere near the actual string itself. There we go. I'm gonna reuse this peep, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of tension. Pop this out, throw it in my magnet tray, and then I can start removing everything. Now, you also have another option too. If the customer's strings aren't too bad, uh, you can actually save them, so I'm going to do that. To keep the center portion of my uh, wife's string here, I'm gonna grab a little random piece of serving I have laying on the bench stick it in here because this is the exact center of the string when this bow would have come out of the factory. Add a little tension to pinch that in the center so I know those are her peep knots. That's right there. The D-loop's already established so that can't come out. So I'm just going to add a little bit more press tension here. And I'm just going to try not to unravel these entirely, right? I'm just going to kind of roll them up on themselves and I'll be able to save both the string and the two cables. Now, if your bow has a roller slide or if it has just a fixed cable slide here, you may or may not need to remove a set screw, which I need to remove a set screw if I can find, ah, there you are, if I can find my screwdriver. If you have to remove small screws like this, keeping magnet sticks around, you get like Harbor Freight, Lowe's for a couple of bucks, they're great. Keep E-clips and all your nuts and bolts together. Uh, allows you to uh, not lose those parts and pieces because <laughs> they're quite valuable and very hard to replace. So I'm gonna pull my cables off here. Toss these off to the side, and I can actually put these in the string bags that came from the new string cable, so I'll do that later. I always like to install the cables first, uh, and then install the string last. Most of the time when a set of cables and strings come together, it's usually paper clipped on the ends, so that way you don't lose the twists, uh, because they are supposed to be a specific length. If your bow has a binary system, which is what this bow is, one end of the serving will be shorter than the other end, okay? And if you look at your cam, there's always going to be a cable that gets picked up and a cable that gets let out, right? So if you visualize this right, bow gets pulled this way. So the cams are gonna go like this, okay? The cams are gonna get pulled this way, which means on this piece of the module here, as this cam goes, it's going to pick up, right? It's going to take a cable and it's going to pick it up. And if you needed to, prior to doing all this, take pictures of everything and see what that looks like so that way you can reference it on your phone or something like that. Or heck, you can even draw a little sketch real quick. You can. I just know that after years and years of doing this, the long serving is going to go in the cable that gets picked up and the short serving is going to go in the cable that gets let out. That serving is just wear protection there since this is going to get picked up and let out as it shots and picked up and let out as it's shot. Um, I'm going to put that long serving here. So usually I just pop this into my mouth. <laughs> Trying again, not to not to let it untwist right now. It's not it's not the end of the world if it happens. OK, you might have to add a twist here and there later on down the road. Right. It's not the end of the world. But letting all the twists out or four or five or six twists out. Now, that's a different story. That could be a little more difficult. But if you lose a twist here, half a twist there, don't don't panic. Don't sweat it. Way worse things can happen. Identify my long serving. It's up here. It's good. Get my retaining pin. Just stuck to my magnet. Last but not least, the string. Right, we got four and a half to center written right here in the bag. Make sure we don't lose that. And just like how we have to identify which cable goes where based on the serving, the same thing is true here with a string, particularly with a binary, because it's pretty symmetrical. Most of the time, the string builder will install that piece of uh, serving right there, just like we reinstalled uh, on the old string when we took it off. That piece is going to go on the top. That's going to go towards the top cam, so that way you can install your peep there in the exact center of the string. And also, a lot of the time, down here on the bottom, where a string stop goes, they're going to have a little piece of serving. So you'll see a little piece of serving over a string stop. That 
that uh, or sort of wound tight serving and then that uh, tag end serving there through the string it's going to go towards the top of the P. I usually start with the bottom cam although it really doesn't matter. Again trying not to let 57 twists out of the out of the string again it's not the end of the world if you lose a half twist or a twist here it's you can always put it back in later when we go to check spec on the bow. Right now we're just getting everything installed cleanly, safely, and efficiently. Now I'm a little bit tight here, so when you put uh, brand new strings on, they're a lot tighter than the old strings, right? So right now, because of all the serving and all the kinks in the cables and everything, I'm actually having a little bit of issue putting this in the string groove. Because of that, I'm just going to add a little bit more tension. That's all. Extra turn or two, okay? So if you start off, and that pops right in there, no problem, right? So here I am. This is basically what it looked like when I started with the old string. Right? And that makes sense because these haven't been broken in yet. They haven't stretched out. There's kinks in the cables and the string here from packaging. Okay? That's it. Whenever I see people are like breaking limbs or feathering their limbs in the press is because they're reefing on these things. They're really putting them over the top. That's all. Just add enough tension to take them off. Add enough tension to put them on just like that. And you're clean as a whistle. I mean, and there, I mean these limbs are barely flexed. So you think about it. When you go to put a bow in a press, right? What you're doing is basically shooting the bow. The draw side can go out another 20 inches from here, right? 24 inches from here, okay? So in order to put that much tension on a bow, in order to break it, that's a lot. That's really bad negligence on a press use, okay? But now I'm going to start taking tension out. So what I, why, why I'm adding tension here is to make sure that everything is sitting inside of the cam grooves. If it wasn't, I'd feel it pop, okay? Um, particularly when they're fresh like this, they're not, you know, they're not really... Um, not very pliable yet. So I'm just going to add that little bit of tension as I wind this out. And right before I get to the end to take it out of the press, I just go over everything while it's being held in. Everything's attached in the teardrops. Everything's in the cam grooves. There you go. And you have a fresh pair of threads. And it looks really sharp. <laughs> Actually really jealous. My wife gets a set of new set of string cables and I don't. So now again, this goes back to the adding or taking out twist. I'm just going to put in just the tiniest amount of tension. So it'll just, it'll just hold the bow here. Okay. So I can demonstrate this. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tape measure and I'm going to check all of the specs of the bow. So this is a 31 inch axle to axle bow. Um, so I get up to an eighth inch of play in either direction. So I'm going to go center of axle here, center of axle over here, and we are at 30 and seven eight so we are a little bit on the short side that makes sense because we just put a set of fresh threads on here uh, so 30 and seven eighths be a little bit short on the axle to axle makes total sense but we're definitely within spec same thing here i'm going to measure from the deepest uh, part of the grip to the string here this should be about six and a half inches and we're just shy of that we're about six and three eighths also we get an eighth inch of play there so we are within spec okay we're a little short on brace a little short on axle to axle here but that makes total sense to be a little bit short and particularly axle to axle length when you put a, fr a brand new fresh set of string cables on here now i'm going to go ahead and establish my d loop remembering that she had that soft knot in there so i'm going to take my t square here and this is how i always establish d loops i put a t square on here um i know Everybody's probably like, where's your vice and all of your bubble levels and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I, I just don't care about all that stuff. I line up a T-square. Usually I lay it on the table flat so I can see a little bit of what I'm doing here, but this works out really well. So I'm just going to do that there. Just the, just the very bottom edge of the burger hole is being covered up by my T-square. That's going to give me a nice perfect mark there to put a silver Sharpie. And T-square sit here. I mean, look at this. I don't have to have it in a vice. I don't have to have everything level. I don't have to break out a speed square or anything silly like that. I have a perfect zero mark exactly where I want that. Grab my silver Sharpie. Go off my zero mark and I'm going to mark my initial soft knot. And once I have that soft knot established, I mean, that's it right there. No fussing around with that. 12 bucks T-square. Or you can buy a $200 vise and fuss around with bubble levels. And I don't know. That's not for me. Take a little piece of serving. I like using softer braided stuff for soft knots, even though I know most with black and white and it might not match your string cables, but uh, it works. I like to double it over itself so I can loop it inside. And that gives me that perfect cover up of that silver Sharpie right there. That's perfect. Now I'll take both legs and I'll just tie an overhand knot once or twice. Kind of beef up that soft knot a little bit. 
Take a lighter. So that way now I can establish my D loop. I'll put one knot underneath the soft knot, then we'll go up top here, and I can mess around with how far those D loop knots are away from each other to fit my wife's knock fit. Now here I have one of her arrows here. This is a gold tip 22 with a, an F knock bushing here. So I now can take that tiny little knock, I can set it in here, and now I can establish a D loop around that for her to make sure she has the right knock fit. Now what I'm also gonna do here is I'm gonna take now, because remember, four and a half, right? I'm gonna go off the top of this soft knot. Now that's gonna be a little bit off. It's gonna give me a little bit of a short number, or a little bit of a tall number rather. But now I can see this is gonna be approximately four and a half right there. I can grab this piece of serving, and I can slide it down to that approximate location, all right? Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my peep in here, because when I put my peep in here, it's gonna give me string twist. All right, or D-loop twist, right? So if I tie D-loop first and then put peep in here, that D-loop's gonna go wham, it's gonna go one direction or the other because I've pulled apart the bundles. And particularly on a lighter poundage bow like what, you know, like a woman or a youth archer would shoot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get her peep installed to start. This will make my life a little bit easier. Now that's not gonna be a perfect location but that at least will give me, and it did, it did twist. So this burnt end of my D, of my soft knot was facing straight up. Now it's almost, uh, if you're looking at a clock face, almost at three o'clock. So it really did add a whole bunch of twists. And if I had installed a D loop like that, now my D loop would be facing me. It'd be way off from this peep location. So if I go here, let me actually get an arrow. I don't like clipping an arrow on here. I feel like I mess it up too much, but now if I go off the top of that arrow, which would be the bottom of my D loop knot, Four and a half to center. And kind of push this up a little bit. Too tall. Bingo, right there. Now that I have my D or my peep rather, take my silver sharpie. I'm gonna mark the string inside the groove that goes around the peep. Now that I've done that and I have its location, I will actually tie this in. You can tie in your peep however you like to tie in your peep. Again, that's now fixed. This is fixed. We have permanent locations for both. Now also I would go in, now that I have the tape measure out of the way and this is established, now I go find the kisser, clamp it in, and then I can mess with the D-loop. And then I can mess with string twist. Then I can mess with peep rotation. But now everything's established together. I didn't establish a D-loop and then try to fuss with the peep after the fact. That's what we have to do when it comes to a brand new bow and a brand new setup for somebody. When you don't have that location, you have to mess with that. And quite often, I personally recommend, once you get that peep in there and you figure out the height, cutting off the D-loop and doing it again, doing it so it's straight. Don't sit here and try to push D-loop knots around. You're gonna end up messing up your center serving. It's gonna lose its grip uh, on the D-loop and you're just gonna have D-loops that spin, serving separation. It's just, it just doesn't look good. Um, so I recommend once you kind of get this established, the D-loop, and if they're not sitting square with each other, you're not getting good peep uh, clearance and good peep rotation through it so that way it comes back straight. Cut that D-loop off, add the twist you need to add to the string, put a new D-loop on there. It's worth the extra dollar of material and 15 minutes worth of work uh, to save the integrity of the center serving and have a happy customer. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this bow up, but that's all for this video. If you have any questions on doing a string cable change and how that looks and how that works and I didn't leave you with all of your answers, please do follow the links in the description below. Hit me up on Facebook and Instagram. You can always drop a comment here on YouTube or reach out to us at AverageJackGurchie at gmail.com. If you wanna call Average Jack Gertrude Pro Shop and Range your home shop, feel free to come on down 21 North Front Street in Phillipsburg, PA. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation. Enjoy setting up your bow and we'll get to see you next time.